what happens when you try to become pregnant? This is a question that could easily be mistaken for, how do I get pregnant? And I bet if I were to ask all of you this question, you would tell me you know exactly how this works. The steps that I hear recounted the most when I ask this question are, number one, go off the pill. Number two, have sex. Number three, there's not supposed to be a number three. It's supposed to work like this. Except this is not true. There is a large blind spot, and it is the result of the well-meant sex education we receive as teenagers. When we are teenagers, we are taught that pregnancy happens in the split second where we don't have contraception under control. We are told to be careful when we become sexually active, because that, before we know it, we will be stuck with an unwanted pregnancy or a sexually transmitted disease. And to be fair, these risks are real, and therefore this approach is valid for sex education in teenagers. Now, let's look at teenage pregnancy for a moment. A pregnancy during teenage years, be it wanted or unwanted, is something really difficult to handle. Most of the times, the relationship doesn't last, and the young moms are left with the burden of being a single parent and still having to complete their education. The TV show 16 and Pregnant has been airing on MTV since 2009, and it portrays the reality of soon-to-be teenage moms in the U.S. It's really not an easy thing to do. The problem is that this is really the only sex education we get until some of us find themselves trying to conceive and it doesn't happen. Many of us think uh, that pregnancy happens instantly once contraception is discontinued. And let's think this through together. If the probability to become pregnant is well under 1% while we are on the contraceptive pill, how high do you think the probability to become pregnant is when we go off the pill? Our human brain is built in a way where most of us would intuitively say, if it's well under 1% in the one scenario with the pill, it's got to be above 99 in the other one. Unfortunately, this is not true. If 100 women have sex continuously for one year unprotected, at the end of the year, 85 of them will be pregnant, and 15 still will not be pregnant. This statistic is also known as the Pearl Index, and it is supposed to tell us about the reliability of different contraceptive methods. The problem is, it doesn't tell us anything about what happens when we get older. Hence, we assume that nothing changes. When we are younger, in our 20s, most of us find themselves well underway to collecting our education certificates. Wanting to be a mother or a father is something that almost every student imagines for later. By the standards of the sex education we received as teenagers, we are on the perfect trajectory. Everything is under control and planned. In the meantime, however, the looming threat of instant pregnancy silently makes a U-turn and becomes not being able to become pregnant at all. Fertility and the ability to become pregnant is not a stable characteristic. They have a variance. They vary over time, and they vary between people. Many people need years of timed intercourse to achieve pregnancy, and one in seven couples actually ends up requiring medical help to have a chance at pregnancy. And there's never a guarantee. Now, if you think back to what I first told you, the magnified scenario of instant pregnancy and the looming threat. Somehow, this knowledge never changes in us. It lies dormant. But with age, it should get an update. I mean, how many updates have you given your computer since you were a teenager and received that knowledge? Many people keep thinking that becoming pregnant involves the steps one and two that I told you about in the beginning. This is further fueled by the media reporting stories of late parenthood left and right. It makes us think it's possible for everyone. But the problem is, we only really find out ourselves at what end of the spectrum of easiness to achieve pregnancy we are when we actually start trying. Let's look at this spectrum a little bit. 
In Germany, the mean age for a woman to give birth to her first child has continuously risen since 1970 and is now at a little over 30 years of age. At 30, in women on average, fertility starts to decline, at first slowly and from the age of 35 significantly, until at the age of 43, the chances to have a baby are almost zero. Now, you may tell me, but Sally, I know people personally who have had kids at that age. Yes, you are right. These people are real and their stories are true. But let me ask you one thing. How many people do you know who tried to have a baby later in life were unlucky and are now involuntarily childless? Let me guess. Probably none, because this is still a major taboo topic of our time. Sex is everywhere, but the knowledge about fertility is shockingly little and extremely flawed. I once even talked to a medical doctor who kinda, sorta, wasn't really sure where the fertile days in the menstrual cycle are and how they are calculated in relation to ovulation and sperm lifespan. By now, you may be wondering how I am personally affected by all of this. If I'm a teen mom or if I've been trying to conceive over the age of 30. Fortunately, I have not been affected this way. But who knows? I'm 34, I have not frozen eggs, and I've never tried to become pregnant so far. I've been affected in a different way, however. I've been deeply touched by the courage that women develop to get through infertility treatment one or the other way. I'm a mental and reproductive health specialist. There are about 150 of my trade in Germany, people who are licensed to provide fertility counseling. You probably didn't even know this existed. It is our job to help women and couples to continue fertility treatment or to discontinue treatment and start out on the surreal journey of creating a fulfilled life without children. I have talked to many women about their shocking realization of what I explained to you earlier as fertility having a variance. Or, to put it differently, everyone thinks they will get pregnant instantly until it doesn't happen. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not promoting early parenthood per se, nor am I against contraception. I'm just saying we need to update our knowledge about sex and how to become pregnant during our 20s and 30s in order to make self-determined choices. When the miracle of instant pregnancy that was previously the looming threat doesn't happen, it turns the world upside down for the people who are affected. Many tell me that they feel deceived by the sex education of their teenage lives. That they feel like the years in which they would have been able to have kids have slipped through their fingers while they were taking contraceptives and making life choices based on the knowledge from sex education in school. This is why I am speaking to you about updating your knowledge. And let's start with this update now. Shockingly, people who have been trying to conceive and open up about it are mostly given false information. They will most likely be told that they haven't become pregnant yet because they have too much stress. And this is something I want to stress here. That is false. To date, there has been no scientific evidence that has identified the type of stress that is supposed to make pregnancy improbable. It is medical conditions and the normal effects of aging that prevent a pregnancy from happening. This is described ex extensively in medical guidelines, but the myth prevails. The problem is that this myth keeps people who have a good chance of getting pregnant with some medical help. The myth keeps them from seeking help. And people who have actually been through the treatment also prefer not to talk about it. And I mean, who can blame them? If you had gone on a vacation and received some medical infertility treatment to become pregnant, which story would you prefer to tell? Now, let me get back to my initial question once more again. What happens when you try to become pregnant? Well, you're either in the group of the lucky ones where it happens in six to 12 months or you involuntarily become a member of the trying to conceive community. This is accompanied by a distortion of time. Suddenly, you can't wait for your next menstrual cycle, your next ovulation or the next pregnancy test. And at the same time, time seems to be slipping through your fingers. Many people tell me that they had never thought that this could suck them in so much 
and that the wish to have a baby could be the only thing they can think about from morning till night. And here again, they are mostly given false information when they open up about it. Many of them will be told, if you stop thinking about it so much, it's going to happen. And when I hear this well-meant advice, I try to think it through with my professional education as a psychotherapist. Are there supposed to be harmful thought molecules that travel to the ovaries or the endometrium and push some sort of pregnancy off button? And all of this is supposed to not be detectable by contemporary research methods? No such associations between thoughts and the probability to become pregnant have been observed to date. So please, if someone opens up to you, encourage them to seek medical treatment and don't tell them it's the stress or the thoughts. That is as if you were putting up a sign in the desert that points away from the oasis. Now, imagine hearing these things as a counselor every day. At first, I thought, this should be different. Someone needs to do something. And when my best friend Luisa was affected, I decided to do something. I accompanied Luisa and her husband through two years of infertility treatment as a counselor and friend. And now brace yourselves, because this is not the, one of the stories with the happy ending that you know from all the internet ads where they try to sell you the next magic potion to make you pregnant. Luisa and her husband, after two years of fertility treatment, arrived at the conclusion that the chances for them to have a baby are almost zero. Recently, they embarked on the journey of creating their fulfilled life without children, and this in the midst of both their siblings welcoming little ones. Luisa cannot speak up here because for her, the implications of sharing her unwanted childlessness are still too great. But I can, and I can make her experience useful for all of us. So, this is why I'm encouraging everyone to update your knowledge on sex and how to become pregnant. Let's base our decisions on when to have kids in life on solid statistics and not the sex education of our teenage years or the stories of individual people. It is a numbers game to a large extent, and we need to know what we can count on. Let's talk to our friends, family, and doctors about this to get on top of things. Let's give ourselves the update we have given our computers a hundred times since we were teenagers. Thank you.